Welcome back for your second very special episode of Collider Mailbag. Today is all about Collider behind the scenes questions and there is nobody better to help me out answering those than Mark Riley. Oh, well, thank you, Perry. It's uh, it's good to be here. Behind the scenes, I'm excited about, especially because I can share that I beat Jeff Snyder at Guess Who? Behind oh, the scenes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're not the only one. I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, I know. It's a cool game. We're pretty it's a good. cool game. <laughs> <laughs> down to the last question. Yeah. Uh, I love it. <laughs> I don't know if mine was down to the last question. Yeah. I think, I think after uh, I played Jeff, Wendy played Thad, and I'm pretty sure Thad got crushed. Okay. Yeah, that makes <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I like You got to ask if they have glasses. I asked. That was glasses my first question. Is the key. Well, he asked glasses. Actually, he did. And then I was like, okay, I think I asked something like... Are they a director? And that got a lot. Okay. Got a lot out there, but it was down to like two for him, and he guessed wrong, and I won. That's no, all. Nobody That's has all. any clue what this game is. So somebody made Jeff a, a movie version, or like yeah. more like entertainment industry version yes. of Guess Who. And there's all instead of like the the cartoon people, it's all these famous people. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but before we get to the questions, I do want to shout out mm -hmm. to a friend and fan and somebody that uh, sent me this, Dakota Jones. I mean, look at this, Perry. You know how much I love come it. Come <laughs> on. That is so awesome. His original painting, Halloween, the shape, hiding behind, hiding in plain sight, obviously. I wanna thank Dakota. He just, it's beautiful. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. He's a fantastic artist. I'd go find him immediately on Instagram where I follow him. But Dakota Jones, that's where you can find him. Thanks, dude. I really appreciate it. An extra special thank you to Dakota for making sure your artwork sticks within the Collider Mailbag color scheme. Exactly. <laughs> right? right? On the money. Mm. Uh, before we jump into today's questions, a brief reminder. This show exists on YouTube. Also, the podcast channel as well. We are under the Movie Talk feed. Check it out on iTunes. Where, where, where else do you uh, listen to podcasts? All over the place, right? Yeah. yeah. Go listen to them. Yeah. Tell Good your podcast. friends about them. Yeah. On top of that, I got to remind you guys where to send in your mailbag questions. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then, of course, via email, mailbag at collider.com. Send them there. Keep them short, sweet, different, fun, interesting. You might have a burning question that you've sent in a whole bunch of times. If you have and it hasn't been picked, I urge you, switch it up, change it up, because sometimes we're afraid to pick the same thing twice. So yeah. if, you, if you haven't had that same question answered many a times, there's so many other topics to hit. I can assure you that. Just like all the topics we have today. Yeah. You ready to get into it? Oh, I'm ready. All righty. The first one is a Twitter question from bbrasula556, who writes, I've seen on Instagram that Perry and Christian got into a discussion on where LaCroix <laughs> is sold. How do, how do discussions like this start in the Collider office? And what is the most asinine argument that you witnessed while working there and who was involved? Oh, my God. <laughs> asinine. I don't cut. So many. I'm trying to think. I mean, one, you never, uh, the, the, most of these conversations usually just start around getting coffee in the morning or like getting food, lunch, and it, it evolves into a conversation about movies or television or what's going on in the world. And then an offshoot, LaCroix, where you mentioned in passing, right, that you didn't see any at there Ralph's. There was a reason I couldn't find the LaCroix in the supermarket. Right. So the Ralph's that I go to, they have two specific aisles for non-alcoholic beverages. So okay. whenever I want a non-alcoholic beverage, I go in those two aisles. Sure. Why is LaCroix in the wine aisle? Why? <laughs> So Probably I never for, turned that corner. You know, uh, LaCroix has turned into a thing. I don't know why, because... It's not good. My cousin, when I was going down to visit my family, said, pick up some LaCroix, we need vodka mixers. And I went, okay, and I found the LaCroix in the alcohol section. Not the wine section, the alcohol huh. section for mixers. That's what Do it was. Do you like LaCroix? It's fine. Um, I don't mind it. I don't, I don't drink it usually, but it's, if it's available to me and I'm thirsty and I need to quench my thirst, I will have some LaCroix. Um, some of the asinine argument, I'm trying to remember. I remember Roca and Christian getting into just a heated thing. I don't and even it, remember what that was about. But it was about exactly Schmodown, I think. About. I think was it was it? about Schmodown, as it usually is between those two. And something, I don't know, happened. You know, there were some words exchanged. It was all in good fun, but it was just like everybody kind of looked up and went, all right, all right. And I, I believe I, I do my, my usual thing. Uh, I steal a, a line from a family guy. I go, kids, 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 you're both awful. 
And that's <laughs> and they usually walk away after that. But well, that's that's what I remember. I'll throw Christian under the bus again and I'll say any conversation that winds up in Christian making a bet with someone. Oh, it always. It always goes so far off the rails. He he <laughs> wants to bet. I'm I'm waiting for that. He wants perfect to bet day. steaks all the time. He wants to bet steaks so like you could bring him stuff to cook on his grill, but then he won't cook you any. He'll right. just cook it for himself. Yeah, he, he, he called me outside the other day. He's like, look at all this great food I made. It was like really great looking shrimp and asparagus and everything. And I'm like, oh, that looks wonderful. And he's like, yeah, right. And he closes the grill and that's it. He, you got to watch out betting with Christian Harlov because he always usually had, knows something maybe that you don't know or he's right on the money. Uh, he, the guy, I haven't seen the guy lose a bet. You, so it, that's just fair warning. Do you remember the fight about the overhead lights? Whether yes. or not we turned on the lights. Yes, there was that. That's a good one. It's, well, because that is that is probably the perfect definition of an asinine argument we've had in this office. Right, because we like the lights off for the editors because they like to, you know, get yeah, a little. I guess, yeah. Well, it, 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 God bless the editors here and Adam, who's in the booth right now, and all of you guys who do this because you have to deal with us, which is a lot of big personalities and egos, including Roka and Jeff, who probably have Dorian put out that great tweet. This is, you're getting some behind the scenes goods right now. Yes, biggest egos, Roka and Snyder, I would say totally. <laughs> a lot of hot air coming from the middle section of the news team, like it includes us. Not, I think we're pretty uh, down to earth. Oh, yeah. But then these poor guys, they, they, they listen to us. They're, they're, they're like, we're talking, we're, we're obtrusive, we're saying things and they have to work and do a lot of work. And then, they're not, and then we're not even answering the slack for when they need titles to get the video out there. And so this, these lights, you know, we wanted them off, but then somebody comes in, I believe it was Christian, comes in and goes, <laughs> why is it dark in here? Turns it off. And people are like, you know, I need the space, you know. Not enough credit to our uh, wonderful yeah, post team. I'll, I'll second that. Yeah. I, I, I can understand that with the with the lights. They they work insanely hard, and so does every single person. Yeah, of course, building. they work harder. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> Give credit where credit's due. <laughs> I try. All, All right. right. Question number two. Question number two comes from Twitter. Yanni Z Zagu. Sure. Johnny Zagu writes. This is not a Twitter question. I mislabeled it. That's way too long to be a Twitter question. Okay, we'll, we'll call it email. <laughs> uh, hey, Collider, if it gets in mailbag, this would be second, which would be great. But my question is, I personally want to be a filmmaker when I grow up. And do you think going to film school is necessary? I know Paul Thomas Anderson didn't go. And look at him. But people like Spielberg, Howard, Lucas went. Do you think going to film school makes you a successful filmmaker? Or is it just a waste of money? Thanks, guys. Have a great minute. I picked this question because I get asked this question all the yep. time and it's totally understandable why you would hear it all the time because yeah. film school is an insane amount of money and I don't think there is one answer to give everybody out there. I think it's a very personal experience whether or not it's worth your while but for me, it was absolutely vital because I had studied, uh, I studied journalism undergrad and okay. then I started doing film journalism in particular immediately after I graduated and it hit this point where I said to myself, wow, I'm critiquing someone else's work that I've never even tried myself. And then also I did have that, that itch to actually make something too. So I went to film school and I'm pretty sure that I would never be in the position I am right now, whether it's doing what we do here at Collider or, or even having produced a, a feature film and a few shorts, right. had it not for being in that program, learning those basic skills, but maybe even more importantly, building that network and being able to meet people. Yeah, uh, I, I second a lot of that. Um, you know, the, the short answer is no, you don't need to go to film school. I mean, you never, no, here's here's the thing that I learned in my experience. I did minor in cinema um, and I met a ton of people and those connections really can help and they've helped me numerous times in the past. But I just, I, probably because it's on my brain, I recently had the director of my movie, Gray Skies, that I made, Kai Blackwood, on the Riley Roundtable. And we did talk about Gray Skies and the making of it along with alien abduction and seeing a UFO and, you know, it, it are aliens out there and what happens in the, you know, that kind of stuff. So <laughs> nice plug. Anyways, he never went to film school and he got, his, he got his hands on a camera and he's always been a very creative person and would write and write. And then he got his hands on a camera and he shot it. He learned to edit himself. And then we hired him to direct our movie. That's one example of a little bit of success where in today's world, especially, with Steven Soderbergh filming mm. on an iPhone, 
you can go make your own movie right now. And you can, do, you can make all the mistakes in the world because you will. Mm -hmm. You will make every mistake in the world. You can look at my movie, Gray Skies, and you can see all the mistakes that we made up there on the screen and we did something creative. But I, I think that it, it is really dependent on your take on it. If you want a lot of good friends, a great experience, learn the craft, go to film school. If you want to do it yourself and meet people on the way, do that. It's really, I just... I think it can work either way. There's an exception to every rule. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's a pretty good breakdown of, uh, of both sides of it there. Yeah, I tried. Hopefully that helps. Now we're going to move on to our third question. And this one is a Twitter question. Ah. It comes from Teaching KC, who writes, Greetings from H-Town. Why is there a time limit on Collider shows? Every week, John Schnepp says something about... John Roca and going over time. <laughs> Thank you for answering this question. I love this question. It's a good question. I, <laughs> I mean, love this question because this is <laughs> this is one of those things that always devolved into some sort of asinine uh, conversation slash disagreement after. Yeah, I mean, the, the 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 I guess why do we have time limits? I mean, we like to keep certain shows at a certain time. Um, I, I I believe you can probably answer this better than a the variety me. of reasons a variety of reasons there can be news articles that we try to keep at like five to six minutes because we want to get in and get out uh, we want people as many people as possible to get their news so clicking on a, an hour-long video for news no five to six minutes yeah mm -hmm. you get your news you get a little commentary off and running Movie Talk has been about an hour for as long as I've been working on it, for almost three years now, but we've kind of tried to scale back to 50 to 45 minutes. Again, kind of watch time. We want people to be able to mm -hmm. get the, the, the content and have fun without doing it too much. I mean, there, there are videos that are, uh, are, like by design, are supposed to be longer, like two hours, commentaries, you know? But when it comes to like Roca, <laughs> Roca, uh, he's the producer of Heroes. And John Schnapp likes to talk about sweaty stuff. So when you have those two dynamics go head to head, you have Roca who is trying to get the show to wrap it up because we have <laughs> another video that needs to schedule or come in and shoot. We got to stick to that time. And Schnapp, who just will say anything that's on his mind, God love the guy, will say, oh, Roca's <laughs> screaming at me right now. I got to wrap it up. Yeah. It's pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> I mean, that, that kind of sums it up. It's, yeah. the, it's the two sides of it. It's whatever suits the content the best. Because, right. you know, it's like a movie. Sometimes movies don't need to be three hours long no. unless a movie needs to be three hours long. So that's how yeah. we kind of judge all this material. Does it need to be that long? Does it justify that length of time? But right. I think one of the biggest things here, because, you know, we were talking about how hard the editors work. I mean, there's so many different levels of actually make it prepping for the video, shooting the video, editing it, getting it out there. And we're on such a tight schedule because you probably know we're churning out so much content all the time that mm. if something starts late, if something gets pushed back, the whole schedule could implode. And yeah. that would be bad news for everybody. I think that's the main reason why. I mean, especially now, back in the day when we first started, I mean, you and I started right around the yeah. same time. And it Remember was when we were going to share an office? We were about to share an office, and then that didn't happen. It was more of like a closet. It was. <laughs> and then I got bumped in the schmoes, and then you got your own office. I did. That I was did. Nice. Well, I mean, I remember when we started, we had Heroes, Jedi Council, and Movie Talk. Yeah. That it was, was it was like the it. flagship shows, yeah, and, the and flag, that was it. That was really it. So a lot of those would oh, go wow. over. They would be a little bit, you know, kind of looser as far as their the timing and whatnot. And obviously the studio space, but then, yeah, here we are now churning out a lot of videos. We need to, we need to schedule that shit. You it know? is so weird to think about how much things have changed. Cause I when I first moved out here, I remember we would only shoot the big shows and that was the extent of our shooting schedule. And remember when we all used to go out for like hour long group lunches? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've left the office for lunch. I ate lunch at my desk pretty much so every, did day. I. I, every day. I, like for months now. I know. I, and it's not even like a sad thing. I, it's almost by choice. I mean, you made a comment at me earlier that I'm always working and I kind of yeah. wouldn't want to have it any other way. I'm Same. always like scheming for the next thing that we could cook up. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, yeah. Lunch at my desk is fun. Well, like <laughs> when you have good company, like all these pops and wonderful things, know, like forget the this. human beings. As long as you have good toys on your desk, you're fine. Toys and That's bombs. actually how Riley conjures his lunch. He just sits there, doesn't get up, and just 
Akio in and out burger. <laughs> I like if it. only that really worked. God, I wish that worked. <laughs> Give us our next question. Okay, next question coming uh, from email. Jack writes, why can't we get more podcasts? How hard can it be? <laughs> Just jump in there and bring back TV talk already. Well, that's funny. This is, this is perfect because... Yeah. Somebody just tw uh, tweeted me and Makuga asking, please bring back TV talk now that there's pot. Oh, it was off of a uh, Riley uh, Roundtable mm. uh, a tweet that I put out there and said, why can't we just get a Josh Makuga back? And he rightfully so said, money talks. I need to get paid, which is fair. And that's a lot of television. So I don't know what's going on with TV talk. I know that there was, uh, I, actually, I don't know anything. I, I, I it's just. Couldn't help you with that either. I, I don't know. <laughs> As far as, well, I'll let you talk we about this. We did do a little TV coverage this week. Uh, you do, so yeah. one thing we did post, and I was really excited about it because I just burned through all of Westworld, was I kind of joined forces with uh, Adam Chitwood, who really did a lot of the heavy lifting over at Collider.com. And then Thad, Thad just like binge watched, uh, like blew through the 90 minute season finale nice. for season two of Westworld. And, you know, the three of us put together that, uh, that ending explain video. And, that, it was nice to have a little TV content on the channel again. But it, it is nice. As yeah. far as these podcasts go, so I didn't really, and actually, here's a good opportunity to give Thad another shout out. I know some people out there know, but Thad pretty much built that entire podcast studio oh, yeah. himself, and, it, and it's really incredible. I hadn't used it all that much because I've never really been that into actually podcasting unless Ooh, somebody else. I've done it with other people over yeah. Skype where they kind of do all the work and I'm just the regular guest or something. Oh, no. Keep going. I'm gonna keep going. Oh, I'll it was get bound it later. To happen. It was bound I love to happen. how last week I like pushed over all of Roka's toys and one thing fell off your desk and now I feel really bad. Oh, it's fine. I'm looking at it on the ground now. It's fine. It's fine. Sorry, it, Dakota. Dakota, it still looks beautiful on the floor, I swear. Yeah, it but, landed up, so we're fine. Um, <laughs> a, 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 no transition back to podcasts. Yeah. Um, so, like, I, f I got my first experience pretty recently working out of that podcast studio, one for the interview I did with uh, Haley when the directors of The Endless came in. Right. And then again when I sat down for a half hour and talked to Ross and Marshall Thurber. And what a pleasure yeah. to sit in that room and have a candid, quiet conversation. But really, the whole process is so seamless. It does feel like how Jack describes it, where, you know, why can't you just, like, plop down in there for a half hour and just have a casual conversation? And when you plan it, you can do that. So yes. it's not like the, the guys from The Endless knocked on our door and were like, hey, why don't you come and podcast with us? It was like the request went in the week before. Haley and I talked it through. We did our prep. We went into it ready to go. We went into also knowing when it had to run and making sure that anybody working on it behind the scenes had all the assets and all the information they need to upload it. So there are a lot of things that you still need to do, even though it may seem as simple as sitting down in that chair, pressing start and stop and doing your, your sound check and getting going yeah absolutely i mean the closest it's come to that is when um you know frosty and snyder broke the news about the star wars uh, standalones that they're on pause and fernandez and i really wanted to talk about it mark fernandez uh, our ceo here we started having a conversation then we decided with christian that we should throw up uh, a podcast only jedi council the two of us, Fernandez and me, really wanted to talk about it, and so we outlined it. And then, but here's the thing about that podcast studio: once it's done, it's still got to get up on our network, and that's for somebody to do, which yeah. has been Cody Hall lately. That's extra work for him on an already huge plate of stuff that he's doing. Remember again at the top of the show how I said all everybody here in post are the true heroes here. That's another version of giving it to them, getting it up on our feed, whether it's Podcast One, Collider Factory, or whatever. I mean, the, and then even for me with the Riley Roundtable, I used the podcast studio the other day for Kai, because Kai could only mm -hmm. come in at a certain time. And I had to take that, then I had to go edit it myself, which I do edit, put some music to it, um, and then get it over to Cody, who again, write the description. So it's not as easy as just pressing play. I mean, and if you really want an easy podcast and just press play and talk, it might be a, like, I wouldn't want to do that because there's no yeah. research. I mean, you can have a computer there, but in my opinion, you're sitting there going, um, okay, so um, uh, what, what, what yeah. do you want to talk about? Well, hey, know. what's your favorite movie? 
Uh, you know, over preparing is important to me, so I would never fall in that category. No, Perry would never. She needs at least three days to talk about her favorite movie. <laughs> I like to watch every single thing in a franchise before I talk about one installment. I know. I do, the, you're crazy. The other thing that comes into play with <laughs> podcasting also, just like the previous question, is scheduling, too. Because, yes. you know, we're, we're here all day, but we're busy all day shooting other things, having meetings, prepping for other events, stuff yeah. like that. So it is a matter of like, yeah, you may have an hour free in the podcast studio, but can those individuals actually spare an hour where they're not needed for another project? So exactly. it's a whole lot of moving pieces on our on our uh, very colorful Collider Google Calendar. Yeah, oh God. <laughs> Makes me dizzy. I know, it does make me dizzy. All right, we got one more question today. It is a Twitter question from Strife Lord who writes, Writes, hey, Collider crew, I've heard that you sometimes get show notes sent to you in the evening if there is a late breaking topic that you'll want to cover the next morning. My question is, how do both how do you both process that and still shut the brain down to get some sleep? <laughs> Who sleeps around here? <laughs> There's no better question than this one for this guy right yeah, here. Yeah, uh, yeah, for almost three years now, I've been doing movie talk notes. It's been a long process. So uh, usually now I'm locking notes mm -hmm. um, early. early in the evening because, again, for our post team, there's a theme to this episode. For our post team, I have to get all the topics in, um, hopefully around by three or four to really give them some breathing room so that they can actually make mm -hmm. all those wonderful freaking graphics that they do every day and all the puns that they have there. Did you see the, the pun the other day? I've the, seen a couple the, a lately. A beautiful boy. No, the beautiful Which boy, because it, it was about oh, meth. Oh, the meth one, yeah. Yeah, and it's just the that. lower third says, that. don't do meth. I just, There's... I loved it. And I got to give a shout out to those guys because they create some of the most funny lower thirds that I've seen. Do you remember what the lower thirds on Mailbag used to be? Because I'm pretty sure Adam back there was just the best lower thirds. To oh, the, Adam's Like, I could probably pro. count on two hands times when we actually stopped and were cackling because the lower thirds were so funny. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, and that takes a lot of prep, so... When you have about five or six topics, that's a lot of work. And then when you're talking about at the end of the day, between three and four of getting those topics to our team, we're also shooting news. We also have some breaking news sometimes that we have to deal with, more news videos that we're doing or special videos that we're doing. So if they can lock that in before they go home, then we have, then we're ready, right? Mm -hmm. Then I create the notes, I write them, I, I do all the research and, and the talking points and everything, and then I get them out to the entire crew and panelists. Now, we have been able to do this lately. We've been adding things top of the show or putting them in. And again, the team comes in in the morning, 8 o'clock, 8.30, if news is broken between the time I lock the notes around 5 o'clock at night and 8.30 in the morning, we add it up top. Yep. And usually Mark Ellis, pro that he is, will just do the research himself. We'll talk about it in a pre-pro meeting. The guys will come in, add more graphics into the mix, and there's your movie talk. That's what we usually do. I used to have to lock movie talk in outline form. Again, this was before all the videos and everything. I would lock a, a light outline in the evening. Yeah. I would wake up at 5.30 in the morning and write the notes because if something broke, we would change it. We yeah. would change the order and we would change it. We couldn't lock it. So I would be locking the notes between 5.30 in the morning and 7, 7.30 and sending it out. And even sometimes then we, things would break and we'd have yeah. to do it. But even then, I like the way we do it now. I really like the way we do it now because it gives you more time to prep. For sure. But I don't know how you, who has to like, you're gonna talk about like Firestarter and the new director, you're gonna go see all the movies that that person did before talking about what he's gonna do for Thank Firestarter. Thankfully, I've seen the one that they're talking about in the headlines, so I'm gonna step right? ahead of the game on that. I know, that, that just jumped that, in my That head. is a thing that, that's something that I need to learn how to control a little better because what, what I wind up doing is when you do send out the notes, I start to look through those notes and let's say I don't have a screening that I have to physically go to, I look at those notes and I tend to pick like, if I had to watch one thing to be more informed on one of these stories or read one thing mm -hmm. I do tend to do that between the time of me going home and going to bed and then getting up the next day for work but right. that, that's that's a, a by choice problem where no, I, can't, I can't help it yeah. we're, we're also in an, we're an industry too where we're constantly connected through email through slack through text messaging all the time and I, I think the fact that we are all so friendly behind the scenes just kind of opens the doors to communication nonstop. Yeah. Because sometimes when I text you guys about work stuff like late at night, it doesn't feel like a work text. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
I know, I barely do I, text. I love how uh, now that I'm visualizing this, there's probably someone on the other end of that, and they're like, why the heck is she texting me about this at this hour? You, you never know. I try to turn off, and it's really hard. I really do it try is. to turn off and, and unplug by, by, funny enough, watching a movie. <laughs> but that's, the, well, you know. Well, that's, that's the thing is it never stops because we're it's not like we're we're sitting in, I like, I don't know, like a cubicle doing something that doesn't pertain to just everyday, like, leisure, you know? Right, right. This is... What we do is such a part of, of so many people's just everyday everyday life. Right. Something you do for fun on the side. So it kind of all just bleeds together for better or worse. Yeah. I think it's for better. It, it, yeah, it, it is. And, you know, lately I've been unplugging by going swimming in my pool or, you know, hiking. jacuzzi, hiking. hiking. I do a lot with my fiance I guess my, and Cal. my unplug is the gym. Yeah, the gym for you. I know that about you. Yeah, it's it's hard. I mean, for me with movie talk, if I have to be on the panel, all my prep is in doing the notes. I just know what we're yeah, talking about, yeah. like up here, because... I'm the one creating the notes, so it's it's a process. Yeah, it is definitely a process. I'm so glad we did this episode today. That's fun. I'm just like talking through all this stuff. It's like yeah. not that I not that I ever not appreciated what we do in our team, but when you talk it through like this, it it really does uh, it does amplify all of that. And yeah, you get I'll a peek behind the curtain. Yeah, and I'll second something that uh, you said. Our our unsung heroes on this team is guys like the one running this show right now, Adam Smith. Uh, we have Cody, Joey, Remsen. Frank, Cobster, Thad, Dennis, mm. they do an exceptional job here. And, you know, it's it's fun getting to sit on this set and talk for 20 to 30 minutes. But the post-production process and everything they have to manage to actually get you guys all the material that you're used to every single day, it's a lot of hard work. So a special thank you to them and to the whole Second team that. as well. Yeah. Riley, thank mm. you for being here as oh, always. My pleasure. Thank you guys for watching this episode. Please like and share it. And don't forget, tomorrow, Monday, 9 a.m. PT is a brand new episode of Movie Talk. Hmm, I better do the notes. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.